the morning of day three. I'm gonna go outside and uh, roll out some more head sail and adjust the horn because we are slowing down a little bit because it's only pulling 15 knots instead of 20 like it was all night. Other than that, not much to report. It's still very foggy outside and that's about it. It's pretty comfy inside though. It's right about noon, um, and we're about to download our uh, weather forecast for today. A nice thing about sailing in the 21st century is that we don't have to sail blind anymore. So it's pretty easy now to have accurate and affordable weather forecasts while you're sailing offshore. And so what we have is the Iridium Go. It's basically a little uh, Wi-Fi router that connects directly to a satellite network. And that's what we use to find uh, weather forecasts or download emails or update our tracking in the vault um, and even make phone calls. But it's, I love how small it is. You don't have to have this giant phone with a giant antenna. Like We've been working with a company called Yango Sat for a couple months now. And they're the ones who provided us the Iridium Go. And we're, we're working with them to uh, get our tracking on our vault. So if you guys are tracking us along the way, then it's thanks to these guys that we're able to share, share with you our live tracking map. Looks like it's gonna be the same, like 15 to 20 out of the west until maybe like sunset tonight. Mm -hmm. And then we're probably gonna jive and maybe even put the pole out. And then we're gonna be running on a port tack until, what are we at? Tuesday, one, two, two days on a port tack and then the wind's gonna shift and we're gonna have to jive, I guess, again, when this high, high pressure blows through. This That's high pressure. Dead. Yeah, but, so if we sail fast enough, we'll avoid this high pressure pretty easily um, Thursday. But then we don't wanna to sail too fast because we don't wanna get stuck in that one Friday night. But yeah, it should fill in pretty, that's a pretty quick one. Like it just comes and goes. Yeah, so by the weekend, we're gonna, there's a big low pressure up here, but we'll be south of it. So we'll be where the wind's transitioning from strong to stronger, but we're not gonna be up where there's like 60 knot gusts. Yeah, I mean, this low pressure system is like the size of the entire North Atlantic Ocean. And up here, there's probably blowing 40 gusting into 60s. And sometimes they go down even lower than that. Um, but this high pressure system down here is kind of like keeping it north. So we're kind of just like skipping along between highs and lows and trying to stay between the two so that we don't ever get really strong wind. The whole theory is to sort of stay above the Azores and stay above the Azores high because that spits wind downwind if you're north of a high pressure system and stay below all the low pressures that are blowing through because they have west to east winds on the south side of them. So between the lows spinning this way and the highs spinning this way, we'll kind of get squeezed out like a watermelon seed. It's nice to have accurate offshore weather so we can get like weather forecasts are only really accurate for three days but um, the ability to sort of see even a week out and kind of get an idea if there's anything predicted to like blow up from the Caribbean like a hurricane or a tropical low or if there's any of these like northern lows coming down off of Greenland we can kind of get an idea where they're coming from when they're gonna get here and we can kind of alter our course north or south to try to avoid them best we can or at least sail into less wind rather than sailing into stronger wind. So far our plan to stay between, stay north of the high pressures and south of the low pressures looks like it's working out pretty well. Um, but we're only on day three, so we'll see how it goes. Time is always in a hurry. Get away, get away from here. Time is One of the things we've been doing um, every day at noon is updating the position in our tracking map in the vault mm -hmm. and also updating our position on a paper chart. Um, just it's more fun than anything else I think. Just to sort of like plot our little course and like see it going along the way. Well it's a good back up. <laughs>
it's a good um, backup to have because yeah. if for ever, whatever reason our electronics fail, at least we know we have the paper charts and we know where we were at noon the day before. Mm -hmm. 47 degrees. 47. Yeah. 18 minutes. 18 minutes. It's going to be like here. And then. And then one? 46 degrees. 46, yeah. 47 minutes west. 47. Is we always had paper charts in the past. We never really used them. Yeah, imagine imagine how people used to do it in like just giant. Oh, with a sextant. I think that'll be our next our next upgrade. Our upgrade. Sextant. Our next challenge will be to do this with a sextant. Because right now we're just reading Latin law and off the GPS. That's true. Yeah. Which we have probably close to a dozen pieces of electronics on board that we can get latitude and longitude. We've got like two phones, two iPads, two. GPS chart plotters, one handheld GPS, the iridium, the inreach. Maps. Because all you need is latitude and longitude. You only need those two numbers and then yeah. you can plot your course one. That's how we made it through the, the Caribbean on that first boat that I helped deliver. It was just a handheld GPS and a paper chart. Yeah, so that's cool. It works. Yeah. Yeah, that's about, that's like the main, every day we download weather, um, we update the tracking map in the vault with like a little blog post and a noon position. And we check email and and go back to sleep yeah plot our course <laughs> on the map and then go back to bed and yeah. then we'll make some food later probably yeah i don't think we'll hungry. yeah i don't honestly think that my body is used to the rhythm of the Not ocean yet. just yet, Not yet because i i'm as tired as i was yesterday usually by day three we start to get more into it but i think yeah I think, I think because tomorrow. of the I think tomorrow. Yeah, I think tomorrow. I think tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the day we'll actually be awake at the same time for a longer period of time. I'm gonna go back to bed. You wanna wake up tomorrow? Go back to bed. I'm gonna go to bed. I go. To bed. I've been awake since this morning. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You gonna leave me all alone? <laughs> no, I'm gonna be right there. <laughs> It is starting to get dark. The sun's gonna go down in the next hour or so. And we're supposed to get a little bit more of a wind shift tonight. It's supposed to clock out of the west and a little bit more of the northwest. So we're gonna go ahead and jibe so that we can just kind of like ride that wind shift around and we're not gonna have to worry about it in the middle of the night. You ready to jibbity jibe? Yep, woo! <laughs> it looks like it's gonna be wet outside. There's some waves splashing, so gotta put my layers on. And then, are we going to put the pole up as well? Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, well, let's do this. Aha. I'm looking like a giant, like, red Michelin man. <laughs> a warm, dry Michelin man. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I'm going to roll up the head sail. Drive the main, prevent it, and then I'm gonna go forward, clip the pole off, and we're gonna ease the head sail back out again. Okay. Plan? Sounds good, yeah. Okay. How about I Yeah, you wanna sort of belay me? The home is cold. Check out this sunset. Come out to jive in the middle of the fog and the fog part's just long enough to get this magnificent sunset. It's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> the Sun fog left. Sunset. <laughs> I knew? know. Uh, it's the first sunset we've had since we left St. John's. That's two, true. Two, three days ago. That's days true. Ago, we were in fog ago. ever since. Yeah. But it's pretty. Yeah. We, uh, we should be getting a little bit better weather in these next couple of days. And by better, I mean a little bit more sunny and a little bit less foggy. Um, sorry, we've been a little bit lethargic these <laughs> past few days as well. The first few days on passage are tiring, a lot of always. sleeping, yes. <laughs> just getting back in the rhythm, getting used to shifts and night watch and everything. Yeah. Um, but 
but slowly we're starting to be awake at the same time. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> we'll be like playing games and reading books and there like you go. maybe editing some video and no, doing I, all that jazz. I can't edit quite just yet. Not yet. But eventually well, I'm sure. <laughs> give, give it another 15 days. I'm right. Sure <laughs> eventually. I won't even know uh, I'm on a boat anymore. But, yeah. Oh my gosh, well, look at that sunset though. We've been sailing uh, pretty conservatively these past few days. Just kind of like getting in the rhythm of things. Um, we've the the Cape Horn's been steering really really well. We've been getting good rest. Uh, it's pretty warm down below. Pretty mm -hmm. comfortable. The sea state's really calm. Um, yeah, I mean overall it hasn't been like a rough passage by any means for these first few days. Okay. Yeah. It's like a workout to be out it here. It is a workout. <laughs> um, um, well, we are yeah. going to finish enjoying the sunset yes. and then go back inside and I think it's probably your turn to sleep. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sleep a little bit. Yeah, I'll put away the dishes mm -hmm. and uh, hunker down for the night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers.